Hello good people of YouTube. Today I'm going to be going over five types of players that you will encounter in World of Warships. If you are a new player, these are five stereotypes that are pretty familiar to most veteran players. If you're a veteran player, you've more than likely encountered all five of these in your World of Warships career. So these are five stereotypes that I for sure have noticed and seen plenty of and are pretty popular. So let's go ahead and get started. So coming in at number five is the sniper. This player does not like moving up from the A B line or the or the J I line. Not within the first ten minutes of the game, at least. So they are normally found playing Yamato or Thunderer or even Conqueror back in the day, back when Conqueror was its own self. They are all about getting those cross map shots and you can be darn sure that if they're playing the Yami, they've got uh, Amy Systems Mod 1 on, the Legendary Mod on, probably running Yamamoto, and they for sure have the spotter playing for those 30 kilometer shots. And they, whew, they will not shoot any ship that comes near their ship unless it is directly threatening them. If it ain't 15 kilometers or more away, they ain't interested. And there could be a DD 10 kilometers away from them. If it ain't targeting their Yamato, they don't care. They are all about getting those sniper shots in and feeling like Chris Kyle himself. Now, these players are also going to complain about the Slava with the rest of us, and they're going to say how OP it is, but you can be damn sure they're going to pick it up when it comes out because the Slava is pretty much the ultimate sniper and may very well make the Yami almost a bygone thought because even though the Yami can get out to 30 kilometers, uh, even with the legendary mod, the Spursion's not that great and Mr. Sniper here, they want to have just all their shells converge into one pixel before they land on their target. And the thing is, these guys, they'll sit in the back, they won't do much for the entire game. Sure, they may have a hundred and something thousand damage done by the time of the game, but does it really matter because they've just been pounding the other enemy BBs because that's the only thing they can hit at 30 kilometers for the entire match. And then when they're left alone with just themselves and maybe the CV, they're going to complain how the team fell apart and they received no team support, even though they provided no team support in the first place. So if you are a sniper, be sure you are at least sniping targets that would be beneficial to your team. All right, moving on to number four, we have the YOLO, my personal favorite. The YOLO will more than likely be playing some type of German battleship. They eat, live, sleep German battleships or the Massachusetts or even the Georgia. Or, well, you know what, French battleships too. Anything that's fast and is decent at close quarters, that's what they want. Most of the time, these guys can be found playing turret pits. Now, the YOLO doesn't really know what the S key is. They basically slam W until full speed ahead, and after that, they, they forget about their throttle because they don't really care. They just want to get into the action as fast as possible before anybody else, before even the, the destroyers. Now, they do at least know what the A and D keys are because they will probably be trying to dodge all the fire coming at them because they don't care if it's two ships in front of them or ten ships in front of them. They are going in because they are in a badass battleship and they think that they can take on the entire enemy team by themselves, you know? Especially if they're in the turf, it's because it's got torpedoes, it's got that turtle back armor. The guns aren't really accurate at long range, but... <laughs> Who tries to shoot at long range, am I right? They're all about those, well, 8 kilometers and below engagements. And again, Turpets has torpedoes, so they gotta use them. Doesn't matter that if they stay bow in, they could actually win the fight. If they angle out a little bit, they could get their torpedoes off and get a torpedo kill in a battleship. And in their minds, that is the best thing that can happen. Now, Mr. YOLO, he very well might be success su successful sometimes. He may even break through the enemy lines and get lucky enough to find the enemy carrier. Other times, he'll be dead within the first two minutes of the game, that either from just outrunning all of his AA support, since again, he's more than likely going to be in a turret at another German battleship, and then just getting dunked on by the CV, or he could charge headlong into 10 ships. And like I said, YOLO don't care. If it's two ships or 10 ships, they're going in. 
So they're either dead within the first two to five minutes of the game, or somehow they managed to pull it off, and then now they're on the, the other side of the enemy flank, and now they're killing the carrier. It's, it's, a strange, it's a strange situation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But hey, at least they're pushing, right? All right, moving on to number three. We have Stratus Linnaeus. Now these, these dudes, these dudes, these guys normally have about 2,000 more battles in more than likely the Iowa. They may use the A and D key at the start of the match to kind of angle their Iowa in the direction that they want to go. After that, they kind of forget about them until a very crucial point, and I'll get to that point here in a moment. But they are all about getting all nine guns of the Iowa on target. Doesn't matter that they're showing broadside to half the enemy team, as long as they got their full complement of 16-inch guns on target. That's what they live and die for. Now, they do suddenly gain the ability to use the A and D key, once they realize they're selling into a full wall of torpedoes, and then they act surprised uh, about a destroyer being able to torpedo them from, you know, within five kilometers of them, because they're, they're in Iowa, it's one of the faster battleships in the game. They outrun most of their team, so they wind up being by themselves, or if they do have some support, they're... You know, they're off doing something else, because again, they just go in one direction for most of the game. And then they eat their wall of torpedoes, and then they complain about not having any spotting or any torpedo assistance or anything like that. Or, sorry, hydroacoustic search assistance or anything like that. And then they can use their A and D keys after that to, guess what? Sell in a straight line in the other direction. They don't understand that if you shift your rudder you will throw off the torpedoes and they still can't comprehend that if you're spotted out in the open water and you're not spotting anything it's more than likely a destroyer and at that point you should maybe throttle down a little bit change your course turn just do something but no these guys i was the best ship in the game no contest they don't care because it existed and it's american and it's a battleship and it's the best thing ever so they can sail in a straight line and still get away with it now surprisingly these guys do somehow manage to do at least normally at least a hundred thousand damage or maybe even get a kill or two but it really depends on whether or not there's a destroyer around to take advantage of stratus lineus but most of the times eh, i mean i don't understand you have two thousand matches in iowa and still sail in a straight line i mean Back when I started Iowa, the meta was you go bow in, you hit S for a little bit, you hit W for a little bit, and, and that was Iowa. But somehow these guys have popped up in the past year or so, and I've really been noticing them. But yeah, straight as Linnaeus. Alright, number two. We have the Farmer. Now the Farmer will be playing something like Smolensk, Mines, Wooster, any type of HE spammy ship. And this guy... All he cares about is getting a big fat damage number. That's it. If it a 100k plus, it's a ter terrible game for him. He just wants to farm all day long, set fires, and he won't go after the destroyer that's 10 kilometers in front of him. If there's a grosser curve first 15 kilometers to the rear, that's what he wants. That's his bread and butter. All he cares about is making that curve first have a viking funeral in here. He can hear the Kerr First Captain crying as he watches his ship slowly burn away. And again, he don't care about the Destroyer, he don't care about the Cruiser, he, he's all about farming them battleships. That's all he wants to do, that's what he lives and dies for. And, you know, he could cap the cap, nah, he's gonna chase the Kerr First or the Montana or the Republic, doesn't matter. It's a Kremlin, oh he doesn't care, Fire doesn't care about deck armor and sure, the thing has a bunch of damage cons, and it's pretty tanky, and it heals pretty decent, but that's fine. That's just more damage for him to farm. Favorite target's the Conqueror by far because of its armor layout, and again, because of the super heal. That's great. The, the, the Conqueror can rebuild its ship three times. Phew! That's the farmer's. Uh, that's the farmer's dream. All he wants to do is get all that damage. That's three Conqueror's HP's worth of damage. That's whew, 300,000 damage right there if he really sit, sticks on top of him. He don't care. All he cares about is getting that big fat damage number. 
And again, he could cap, he could provide AA support, he could kill the DD. No, doesn't care. All he cares about is getting that big fat damage number. That's his life. Alright, moving up to number one, we have the whale. No price is too high, including his soul. He bought the Puerto Rico for $300. His sole purpose in life is to obtain every single premium ship that he can get. And he's almost there. The only thing he's missing is maybe a Nikolai, so when Christmas time comes around, he's going to drop $700 on Santa containers to get the Nikolai. He probably has well north of 200 ships. And he's very happy that uh, Wargaming announced that they are adding in another collector badge so he can show off his prowess in, in swiping his credit card for a digital item. But this guy, you all know this guy, he's got the Puerto Rico, he's got the Ohio, he's got the Colbert, he's got the Smolensk, he's got... If, if there's a premium, he's got it. If there's some rare premium that you may see once some blue moon, heck, he's got two of them. Belfast, yeah, I got three of those. Doesn't matter. He's got everything. And the thing is, uh, he probably hasn't grinded out a line in the past year. Because... Grinding's beneath him. He's got enough free XP lying around, or XP he can he can convert to grind up any line that he wants in a matter of seconds. He he doesn't care about grinding. He's here just to play his his premium ship. Now, when it comes to playing his premium ships, he, he's probably not that good since you know he doesn't really grind any lines. He just buys all these premiums at at tier ten. Sure, he may have grinded the the U.S. battleship line back in oh god 2000 and uh, and 17, but. Pfft, who needs that when you got money, am I right? You'll, still, you'll see that this guy, he's get, probably got like 500, oh man, more than that. Probably got 1,000 something battles in tier 10, but suspiciously low battles in tier uh, 6 to 7 for, for the amount of tier 10s that he has. So, be on the lookout for this guy. As far as PR goes, he's probably sitting low thousands, maybe even 900. Because, again, he doesn't really care about performing well. He, he just wants to collect his ships. And there's a subspecies of the whale called the Collector. Now, this guy, he's a bit more genuine. He probably did grind out most of his ships. But, again, just like the whale, no price is too high for him when it comes to a premium ship. If it's a premium ship and Wargaming charges $200 for it, he's going to fork out that $200 to get that premium ship. Because he he's a collector. Alright, guys, so those are my top five players you will meet in World of Warships, let me know in the comments down below. Are there any other stereotypes or players that you can think of? I'm, I could probably think of 10 more <laughs> right now, honestly. But these are the five that I think were probably some of the funniest and most interesting. And definitely some, I, I can, again, if you play this game for any period of time, you've seen these players in game. And you know that my descriptions of them aren't too far off. So again, guys, let me know down below. This is just a fun video that I want to put out. I know there's been a lot of negativity recently. Um, just talking about, you know, like the Slava and the submarine, uh, the submarines and such. So, I just wanted to put out a bit of a fun video. So, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. We are on our way to 15,000 subscribers. And the way we've been going, it won't be too much longer before we get there. And again, I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a great day. And hope to catch you guys in the next one.